let's start today's session so i think uh, we worked on bagging part all right so let's continue working on boosting isn't it so bagging a random and boosting what we have guys exit boost and all those things yeah add a boost cat boost and exit boost and gradient boosting as well some and we complete this ensemble learning and once we done words tune we will done with classifications then we move towards clustering all right so let's go ahead and one moment Okay, so just boosting. So what is meant by boost? Let this one. Boosting techniques. Okay, I want you to understand this thing and then we're heading toward next one. So the first thing is boosting techniques. Assume data. I have one data set. So in the data sets, we randomly or maybe from this data sets, we build the model. We split the data, X train, X test, Y train, Y. And we so model generate some predictions or not. In that predictions, let first rec misclassify. What is misclassify? Actually, it is one, but my model predicted zero. It is misclassification, isn't it? So in the misclassification, so, so this is one and once. So what happened? Whatever the misclassifications happened from this records, it's an addition which is stored in another tree. So from this data sets, we have, we build model, which is M1, and these records are misclassified. Understand or not? Whatever those are misclassified, those records are stored in another tree, isn't it? Okay. This is the first iterations. Now let's go to the second iterations. In second step, train model with these data, we train the model with these data and we test the model with the data set. Are you understanding, guys? So in here, we use training test, but second phase, we built a model with training data with the test data. So can we get some records that are misclassified? Yes or not? 
So whatever the records misclassify, it will build the tree like this. It will keep build the tree and store the misclassification records sequential, isn't it? Is it in-depth or sequential, guys? Sequential. Decision tree is in-depth. Decision tree is in-depth. Recording in and progress. And boosting is sequence. So the interview questions, definitely you encounter this one. What is the reason be between why decision tree is in-depth and why random forest is why random forest is sequence, guys? I hope understand this one sequential why this is sequential tree everybody's clear or not why decision tree is in depth and why random forest is sequential tree all those things is clear all those things is clear am i correct or not next one why random forest is sequential tree i guess clear or not okay so assume in second model, assume four, six, seven, misclassified three, two. Are you guys understood or not? So this is what sequential. I mean, first when you build, we your records are misclassified. Whatever the records are misclassified, that that's stored in and above. Uh, we consider this as a data set, this as a testing data set. We build the model M2. These records are misclassified. And M3, this is training data. This is testing data. Of course, few records. Training models never gives you 100% accuracy. But still, even though you not get 100% accuracy, that's okay. No need to worry. Am I clear or not? Okay. Let's close this now. Let's minimize. Okay. MISC act as test data for next model. That's right. Right, Sash. Understand a little bit concept of boosting. So first concept is add a boost. First algorithm is add a boost or cat boost. Now, a lot of people not used this boosting part. You know why? When you train the model, it takes... 12 hours to train, 24 hours to train the data, isn't it? The second one is gradient boost. The third one is XZ boost. All these things I will cover today and we understand. So before I go ahead, I want to talk about lit math behind add boost. Listen to me and try to understand what I am saying. Am I clear? So have a look at this. Okay, so I hope you understood what's been by bootstrapping, isn't it? What's been by bootstrapping? Randomly pick some data points from original data set is called bootstrap data set. We discuss what is strong learner and base learner. We discuss what are the strong learner and base learner. As I have seven records, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many records we have? Seven records. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven, seven records we have. And can you tell me what is the weight of these records? One, when can I say this? So boosting part, just now I explained, whenever misclassifications happen, it's stored to another, but element backend. So this is what I'm going to explain. So sample weights are one by seven, one by seven, one by seven. So one in, by seven seven point zero seven one just seven three zero and sorry zero and seven four twenty eight like zero point one four understand guess something like zero point one four isn't it zero point clear what a, okay next step the next step is sample weight this is called sample weight and decision stump, what is decisions? Decision stump is by default one depth tree. Isn't it, guys? Decision stump is all by default is by default one depth tree. More 
explorations of decision stump i will i'll give you decision stump did you one depth three or a decision stump is a machine learning model consists of 111 decision tree and that is it is a decision tree with one internal node which is immediately connected to the terminal nodes or its leaf are you guys clear or not what is decision stump by default it is one depth tree understand guys okay now here let's assume we have what are the independent variables the independent variables are just one moment guys So the independent variables are, in this graph, if you notice, the independent variables are F1, F2, F3. So which one would be the root node? Definitely either or, or three, because, so this is called F1, F2. We create a decision stump like that, guys. Okay, assume, assume. So before I go ahead, first step, first step, what we done? First step, we compute the sample weight, isn't it? First step, we compute sample weight. Second step, we build decision stump. The third step, we will build, we will build performance of performance of the decision stump. Build performance of the how to build the performance of stump this is the theory this is the formula one by two log e one minus te by te this is performance of the stump are you guys understand let me if no problem boosting we have a packages i take care of you but i try to explain that why if the records are misclassified how it switched to the another tree so once we compute let's say the performance of the stump is 0 0.896 so i mean to say one two three four five six how many records we is six records assume out of six records one records misclassify happened out of six records one records are misclassify happened whatever the records are misclassifications happened the next step is compute the performance of stump what is total error can i say out of seven records if one records are misclassified, can I say one by seven or not? Isn't it? So that's why we call one minus one by seven by one by seven. What is the performance of the stump we get? 0 0.8. Isn't it? Or not? Are you guys clear up to this? Okay. Now, once you compute the performance of the stump, let me tell you, if, you know what is gradient descent? If we try to reduce the loss to increase the Accuracy. I mean to say, whatever the records are proper classify, are you understand? Then the weights will reduce. Means 0 0.14 will reduce to 0 0.13, 12. So that's called reduce. Okay, guys. Reduce means proper classifications happen. Whatever the records are, misclassify what happened guys the weights will increase so weights will increase means we understand the records are misclassification the records are misclassifications isn't it in have a look at this the performance so here what we do so new sample weight equal to weight into e power performance now definitely so the misclassification records the new weight will create or not isn't it guys the new weights will create because it is misclassified so what is the formula of new weights new sample weight equal to weight into e to the power performance which is 0 0.349 are you guys understand or not and the next step so Listen, so this is proper classifications happen in 0 0.05. The weights are updated weights. Zero, weights are reduced or not e to the power 0 0.05. So if these records are misclassifications, so what happened? The weights are increased 0 0.14 to 0 0.34. Misclassifications or not, guys? 
Are you guys understand? So misclassification, rest of them proper classifications means this one will create a new records, which is tree one sequentially. And this is misclassified. It will be stored in this data point. Are you guys understand? Online team clear? Yes. Arjun, all of them. So how exactly the math is doing this? So weights is very important concept. Deep learning as well. We'll understand later part of it. So understand very simple. We have few. Okay. So what we try to, what I'm trying to say, let me repeat again and boosting. What is meant by boosting, guys? Let's assume. I will try to explain one more time and have it understand and then go back to the next one. Boosting. Okay, so assume I have one data set, isn't it? In the data set, so far we built a lot of classifications model or not? We're using one data set or not? In data set, we train test split, Y spread, few misclassifications happened. How do you find out misclassifications? By apply confusion matrix. In confusion matrix, we found type one error and type two error. Type two error misclassify. Am I clear or not? Okay. Now, definitely, whatever the records are incorrect classifications, those records will store here by the model which we build, which is M1. Isn't it? Next is in the model, entire data you used as a training part, this user part. We have a two data set now. This is train, this is test. Once you build the model, once you build the model, definitely it will store in D2. It will store in D2. So what happened? M2 will, what exactly happened, guys? Model, build the tree sequential or not? So this is called, explain, this is boost. We boost classifications records to another tree, that's called boosting. Are you guys getting my point? So, as an tree, in multiple tree. Now, in boosting, the first concept, how a math behind it? So that's why there is a add boost is one of algorithms. And it this is the technique to do this, do these things, guys. Boost, let's have a look at it. So we have original data sets and we randomly pick some sample, we we create a ping data, isn't it? Assume I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many records we have, guys? Seven records. What is sample weight of the records? One, one by one. So assume, assume the first one. Second one, we compute the decision stump because how math pick the records which is misclassified and make in other bucket that's what means to understand the math first there is a logic called decision stump decision stump is one level tree in root node is always be independent as you compute decision stump assume out of seven records one records are misclassified out of seven records one records are misclassified so what is the error then but it one by seven and once you compute we compute the performance of the stump how to compute performance of the stump you need to apply formula. to apply the formula we got the value 0 0.89 we got the value 0 0.89 so once you compute the decision stump formula what are the performance we got 0 0.895 isn't it 0 0.89 at this and how updated weights what is meant by updated weights so if the records which is misclassified will it doesn't come if it's not come e to the power 0 0.895 is value is 0 0.05 guys i mean one seven with 0 0.05 i replace with 0 0.05 i replace with 0 0.05 because these records are not classified. 
these records are misclassified and I replace with 0 0.349, isn't it? So this record is misclassification. It's stored in another bucket. But it will continue. Let's assume you have like thousands records, same process, but manually this is not possible. Everything is possible by package only. It take care of it. This is called add a boost. This is called add a boost case. I hope you understand or not. I hope you understand. So even though you not understand, no need to worry. I will share one link. I mean, in uh, such to work on, you can work and then things is clear. Add a boost is clear. Next one, gradient boosting. What exactly, guys? Gradient boosting. Gra you know gradient descent algorithms or not? In gradient descent, we apply learning rate. What we implement, guys? Learning rate. So is in gradient descent, can you please tell me, we plot the graph like this? We plot the graph between cost function, isn't it? And what else? Slope and intercept, isn't it? What is meant by cost? We try to plot the graph. This is first concepts at intercept zero. At intercept 0 0.25, this is what we get, cost at two. This is cost three. This is cost four. This is cost five. We getting like this and we get this line. Do you remember? And we, the, so this is the, I mean, we, are we getting cost one, cost two, cost three? Are we getting this line or not? I mean to say, so here, let's implement the gradient boosting part. In gradient boosting, so what happened? You expense degree salary. So we have, let's say an employee experience is two. The degree is PE and salary is 50K. Are you guys under some of the employee table? In employee, two years, degree, master degree, and PhD degrees. And salary is 50, 70, 80, and 100. Did you understand or not, guys? So go to the next step. Y hat, y hat equal to, let's say, 50 plus 70 plus 80 plus 100 divided by 4. Let's assume I take an average, which is 75, 75, 75. Do you understand? What is the residual? The residual is Y minus Y hat. Means 50 minus 75 is 25. So this is R1. R1 means what? Loss functions, cost functions, residual. In gradient descent, are we getting the same thing or not? In residual, are we getting the same things, guys? So assume 50 plus 70 plus 80 plus 100 divided by 4, which is 75. Now let's assume you build the tree with X, Y, and R. Means normally we build the tree with independent and dependent variable or not here dependent variable but rather than this i wanted to build the tree with the residual one understand guys Resi what is difference between y and y hat so have a look at this so once we build the tree okay this is the tree we build the trees and next step Team, are you getting my point? What I'm saying? Online team, are you understand everybody? All 23 friends who have attended today. Because I'm very simple thing I'm saying, guys. It's not a difficult one. I have one data sets. See, if you don't want, I will go back and complete the part. Doesn't the main important part is the concepts. So if you understand this, then only you can do the hyperparameter tuning, guys. Are you getting me? So here I have some data sets and some employee salaries. We have first point. Second point, we take an average of each and every data point considered that is Y hat. This is second point. Third point, we compute the residual. It's predicted, predicted. Fourth point, R1 or not? We are learning gradient boosting. In gradient boosting, we gradient so Gradient descent, we plot the cost functions to reduce the loss. So that's why I try to build the model with cost functions R1, isn't it? So let's assume we build the model with independent variable and residual one. 
and residual one, isn't it? Next one. So R one. If I build the model with independent variable and residual one minus twenty five minus twenty five five twenty five, isn't it? So definitely, I get another residual or not? I mean to say, if I model with dependent variable and residual one in the decision tree, can I get residual two? Isn't it, guys? Can I get R two? So residual two. But if you see each and every residual, the errors are increasing or reducing, guys. Reducing because if the loss is reduced, accuracy is increase, isn't it? If the loss is reduced, then accuracy is increase. If you do not understand gradient descent, you don't understand gradient boosting, guys. Isn't it? So let's have a look at this. So 75 plus 23. Now look at this. The next question, if build the model with independent variable and R2, can I generate another tree or not? Which is R3? Which is R3 means minus 20, minus 1 and 15, something like that or not, guys? So that means if you notice this structure, are we build the tree with the sequential or not? Are you understand, guys, what I'm trying to say? We build the tree sequential. It would be R3. Till the time we try to reduce the loss. What is the re reduce? I told you this is loss. I mean, we try to reach the global minima, isn't it? What is loss function? Guys? This is actual. This is high. Use the loss, good model or not? If I reduce the loss, good model. So that's why I keep on R2 value. Okay, good. R2 means residual 2. Residual 2 means, let me tell you. So we, in gradient descent, we get the cost functions. Wet, that's to intercept 0 0.25, I get another cost values or not? We get all the cost functions and plot the graph. So here, what happened? The first thing is how to generate R2. Assume I build the tree with degree, salary, and R1. Are you guys understand? I build the model with degree, salary, R1. Definitely my another residual will create, isn't it? my another residual will create. So this would be your another residual tree. This would be your another residual tree, R2. So R2, the package will take care of all those things and just R2 would be where to name minus three, minus three, three and 20. Understand Ranjit? Now the next decision tree, the next decision tree would be, I want to build the tree with degree, salary, R2. What happened? R3 will create or not? R3 will create. Did you understand, guys? So, I mean, we build the tree sequentially. That's called boosting is in sequential model. And cat, cat boost is almost equal, guys. Add a boost and cat boost are almost equal. So, add a boost equals to cat boost. Are you getting me or not? Okay. And then for everything very important library in boosting and most of the organizations, they're working on algorithm, which is called XG boost. What is XG? Extreme gradient boosting. When you build the model with XG boost, your model will train more than 6R to R. Hey guys, I will tell you and try to understand this one. Today we build XGBoost model and I want you to implement some of the data sets and interview someone ask what problems or what challenges you faced while you build machine learning model. You say, sir, when I build XGBoost model, it's trained more than six hours. Are you understand or not? To train the model. Train the model means to train each and every record case. So have a look, but a little bit introduction.
terms of XG boost, and then we go ahead to the practical part. Okay. XG boost is an open source software. It is called gradient boosting because it uses gradient algorithms to optimize loss when adding new models, isn't it, guys? So the XGBoost library implements our gradient boosting decision tree algorithms. You cause gradient descent algorithms to minimize the loss. Am I correct or not? And when adding new models, this approach supports both regressions and fication for predictive modeling problems. For predictive modeling problems. Are you guys understand or not? Now the next one. So the next step is XGBoost is entry ensemble machine learning algorithms. What exactly ensemble machine learning algorithms is XGBoost? Am I correct or not? That uses gradient boosting frameworks. XGBoost algorithms was developed as a research product at projects at University of Washington, and they are the researchers or scientists who created it, guys. Understand? And, and all programming language like C++, Python, R, Java, Scala, and Julia as well. So cluster, it supports yarn clusters. What is meant by yarn clusters with Flink, Spark, and other ecosystems, guys? We'll tell the Hadoop ecosystems at the last day, and I hope the installations of Hadoop is one of the biggest uh, tasks, and I will explain all those things in later part of it, guys. Understand? So XG Boost you can use for regressions and you can use for classifications as well. Understand, guys? So how do you use the parameters N estimator? What is meant by N estimator, guys? What is meant by number of trees in the forest? Learning rate. What would be the learning rate? What would be the learning rate? Guys? Learning rate is used to reduce the loss and it is a momentum the step count is very minimum or not this steps step equal to five column sample by tree is 0 0.8 and in classifications learning rate would be 0 0.01 isn't it so gradient descent we reach the global minima every records or not do you remember and when we take every record, every iterations, the, the computation is very slow. The computation is, so that's more. If I take SGD, stochastic gradient descent, what we do? We take random of take, of take like a batch gradient descent. We take batches of points and we try to reach global minima. Isn't it, guys? So all things we, okay. I want you to take right down this one. If the max depth has 2 to 30, what exactly happened, guys? Overfitting problem happens. Isn't it? Subsample. 0 0.1 to 1. What happened? Overfit. We'll tell you the values to use for hyperparameter tuning. Getting me? Subsample. And the next one, column sample by level. 0 0.1 to 1. 0 0.1 to 1. This is overfitting. In hyper, the model you pass max depth is 31. That means it will be overfits, guys. Understand or not? And column sample by tree. Columns sample by tree. And column sample by tree. What happened? 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 to 1. Minimum child weight. Which is one five one comma five comma hundred and lambda. So lambda is take by default. That's okay. An estimator maximum you can pass. Take a decision from one to 
thousand trees or you won't take more than that one two thousand trees an estimator and then learning rate should always be minimum and learning rate would be declared as 0 0.012 0 0.08 did you understand what i'm trying to say so all those things is very important guys so okay. here are you clear please? okay xz boost no problem so 0 0.08 even though you understand math or you not understand the equations in an interview nobody understand what equation you're using behind it first thing second thing in practical we have packages in packages you know how to parameters how to hyperparameter tune so you easily you build any model if someone give you in the work isn't it guys and today i will give you one project. name of the project is just one moment churn modeling so what is meant by churn rate what is meant by churn churn means exit Turn means exit. So this is a live projects or I call as capstone projects, guys. Live projects or capstone projects. So tomorrow, once I complete the cross validates, will explain Monday on entire project list how to make resume. Monday entire session of a report resume part guys okay i will give you list of resume projects and what projects you mentions in the resume to get to be called isn't it okay so churn what is meant by churn churn means let's say you are using geo sim or maybe vodafone sim after few you exchange from vodafone sim to geo that means and geo isn't it so when you exit its impact to phone or guys are you getting my it impact to the vodafone when it's impact to the vodafone if you're a data scientist you will the model if will predict next month almost 500 customer they wanted to exit from vodafone so what you do then you, you're trying to stop them on wings. 500 people. If you stop 200 customers, you retention those customers or not, guys. You retention those customers who wanted to go. And even though if you set up a meeting with them, you understand what is their mindset, guys. So which industry is this, guys? Which industry is this? Telecom. Are you guys understand? Let's go to bank. From SBI bank to ICIC bank, a lot of people are switch or not from banking. I mean, due to some bad services, due to some credit cards, definitely when a customer switch from one bank to other, it's called churn. It's called churn. This project, can you implement this projects in multiple domain or not? Are you getting my point? What is multiple domain? Um, switching in organizations people are quit or not you quit from one company and jump into other companies guys because of high growth and could be in issues and then insurance that capital to insurance isn't it or maybe life insurance to other life insurance anything is guys any domain you take churn pretty always be a capstone projects guys isn't it so that's why there is a project called Churn retention predictions. Did churn retention predictions using machine learning classifications. And in that project, we build XZPO. So I to give you one and let's understand. And we build the model, guys. Just open it. Okay. yes that's right that's right so actually even though it's not overfit but accuracy will goes down accuracy will goes down here assume and 
can change all those things to maybe I can, you can also change to France to exactly guys. Let's and okay. And here and I can and then can change to all right, yes. Okay. So assume I have some row numbers, customer ID, surname of a customer's credit score. Every customer has a civil score or not? The one who banking industry. What is meant by civil score? On civil score, it will decide whether you are eligible for bank loans or not, isn't it? And which reason you are from Hyderabad, Pune, and Bangalore locations? This customers belongs from. Okay, this customer gender is female, male. Age of the customers, tenure. So how many tenures this customer exists in the bank? Two years. How, what is the bank balance? Zero. What are the number of products you have? One means business loan, house loan, mortgage loan, car loan, two-wheeler loan. All these things, one, one product. Does the customer has credit card? One means yes, no means zero. Does the customer is active to the bank? Yes. What is the salary of customers? One lakh the customer exit the already exited means this is the personal detail and yes this customer exited from what my bank did you understand this is what data i let assume data set doesn't mean that it excel sheets in the front end we look like excel but in the back end, this is a customer's information isn't it when i go to when i go to bank when i give my detail they create a records or not each and every records is a customer's details did you understand so for us we being a developer we try to understand in the data and we see them as a but never considered the data set is a number are you guys considered i am trying to help the customer who reach out to the bank and that's what the product is all about. Whenever you're working in IT farm, whenever you're working on data sets, it's just not an Excel sheet. It's not dummy. So every record is customer. Every records are customers. They earned a lot and stored the bank account and saved the money and deposit in the bank account. His hard earned money records long. So I want you to understand whenever you build the model, try to understand don't build the model as a just shake of number and predictions, guys. Build the model as in detail what's going on it. Did you guys clear or not? So this is all about data set we have. And have a look at this. How many customers we have? 10,000 customers records we have. In customer database, in banking database, we have billions of customers or not. So this columns are unique or let's say if you to us do you think same attribute you get or different attributes you get same attribute in us do you think the bank will provide loan to animals no they'll do provide loan to customers itself what the customers they have age salary balance credit card same details they have am i correct or not so the projects which you're doing right now same projects will implement in organizations but might be 15 to 20 attributes is extra are you guys understand or not? Process same. Business methods are different. Attributes are different. But I mean, model building is constant. Process is constant. Am I? Are you guys getting my point? What I'm trying to say? Yeah. So all those things is important. Same attributes wherever you go. I've been work in one of the projects called Wells Fargo. Okay, and uh, same things. Almost same attributes we use over there as well. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? So here, we have some of the data point. Let's build this model in XGBoost. I will build the model in XGBoost. I want you to build all the classifications model. And after that, I want you to use, there is a package called Lazy Predict Classifier. What is the name of the package? 
lazy predict classifier. I'll give you some of these things. First, I will build one classifications model of this data. This is very straightforward and it's, I hope you understand this thing. This is not a tough at all. Okay, let's go ahead and restart the kernel. So let's go ahead, NumPy, Matplotly, Pandas, isn't it, guys? Now let's call the CSV file, okay? And in the CSV file, we have like 10,000, how many? 14 columns, 10,000 rows and 14 columns, isn't it? So let's open this. Okay, so just one moment. I think I need to restart this. Just drop over there. Just drag and drop to it. Oh, got it. Yeah. One moment. Why it's not? Okay. I want this to, guys. So the it will be while this. One second. Okay, it's NumPy, Pandas, wait. Okay, and let's, so I would appreciate if you are working professionals at these projects for different domain, okay? I want you to understand which domain your company is working on it, whether it is healthcare, what is the client review, client pick some data set and build ml part and work i mean update in your profile definitely you get into the recall not to me to to choose you the right one if you are freshers i will tell you you need to implement like six guys one pressure is equals to six year experience guy then only you get into recall are you understand or not to do all to you on Monday. So if it is industrial, industrial also, it is a R&D phase you can implement. There are a lot of industry projects we have. What industries is referred to? You need to think about that as well. Okay, every industry has some problem. Every industry works with Excel sheets. Every Excel sheet has a variable. Every variable has some meaning. And you need to find out which is a dependent variable. And out of it, you can create a use case. Out create use case, try to build this model to find out some insights and represent to the managers. And now let's feed these things to managers in right way. You know how is your managers case. If you not understand, leave it. Go to the try to other company. Very simple. Not to managers are equal. Are you guys getting my point? So that's why I want you to understand this thing. So 
let's call the data and I want to split the data into independent and dependent variables. So assume this is what data set I have in this data set and this is what dependent variables because row number customer ID is not and the surname is doesn't decide whether uh, customers will exit the bank or not. Isn't it guys? Do you think your name decide? Will you exit or will you not exit? No. So that's why those are irrelevant attributes and we eliminate those attributes from the data. And this would be your dependent variable. This would be your dependent variable. So once we've done the dependent variable, so in this independent, we do have some categorical part, which is this one, which is, I mean, I just changed white. Didn't I update the right things? Just one moment. Oh, where is 22, 23rd, boost And let's check this. I think I wanted to, okay. Save ads. I'll go ahead and just Yes. Yes. Now let's minimize. Let's I'm going to apply here. Okay. Oh, I put it from 10 embeds. Is it? Eight Okay, that's the reason. All right, I get it now. Okay. Let's go ahead and we done this thing. Perfect. Okay, guys, so we have few details with us. And I split the data in the data into dependent variable and the label encoder. So do you know which attributes we have? Like one, two, two attributes. You know how to impute the categorical very impute the categorical to numerical. So what I'm I'm trying to use label encoder. Once we apply label encoder to it, have a look at this. I mean everything has changed too. I mean, this one, guys. I mean, this is the data set. And in the data set, I changed the data from female to zero and male to one. Are you guys getting me or not? Then his other, it, it also, we have categorical part. And for categorical part, you can use one hot encoder. And you must need to use the code column transformer. In the data set, if you have more than one categorical, and if you want, pick Multiple way to do but another imp imputation technique using cycle and packages column transformer. Are you understand what is it? Column transformer. So what exactly it does? A little bit review about that. So it will give you transformer, drop, and weight none. All those things. It will convert the categorical to numerical data, guys. Understand or not? Once I implement, look at this. Is it build one hot encoder or not? I don't want to talk about it anymore. So now all the data has converted to numerical. Now note the next thing. Scaling is required or not required? Online team scaling is required or not required? This data. Yes or no? Yes or no? Required. But my question is not required because three algorithms does not require feature scaling, isn't it? So are you guys getting me? So that I, I don't want to do feature scaling. If you want to do feature scaling, you can do it, but not required because three algorithms test for good Arjun. So let's have a look at it. We split the data and then we split the test into 20 percentages, guys. Now thing 
XGB classifier. What exactly guys? From XG boost import XGB classifier. The moment when you implement this, what exactly I want to do? You cannot hyperparameter tune. So XG boost contain the is many and just I want you to write down this one base booster column sample so just have a look at this and if I remove everything understand guys let's go to this one xgb classifier okay and let's build this let's train the data Parameter tuning or not? A parameter tuning by default. All these values are we getting or not getting? All these values are we getting or not guys? This is what so here. Let's try to build and the model is built, and I can say classifier is XZ boost. Okay. And let's predict X test using XZ boost gradient boosting. So when you fit the data, still it's trained sooner or not, guys. Isn't it? We train the model very fast. But if you implement this XGBoost with more records, it will give you, it will train you six hours to seven hours, guys. I don't want you to test all those things at this moment. There is a thing. Did you see in the parameters? Just go there. I mentioned some of points here. Max depth 2 to 30. What is by default max depth? 6. What is by default step case? 6. And what exactly the range I said? 2 to 30. You can build up to 30 depth 3. Isn't it? Or else overfitting problem comes up. Next one. What is the next one? And at this moment, let's check what is accuracy of the model and have a look at this. 85% accuracy. What is bias? 95 is bias, isn't it? Accuracy is 85, 95 with bias, and variance is definitely would be 85. It is a good model, right, guys? How to apply cross validations? I will explain tomorrow. No need to worry. But at this moment, so in hyperparameter tuning, how much we got, guys? 85 percentages we got, isn't it? Now let's go ahead and I'm trying to use these parameters right now an estimator how much it's given 100 so i can pass it to let's say 300 all right guys and max underscore depth equals to 10 up to 33 we can build isn't it and then what is the learning rate did you have learning learning rate is, it should be minimum isn't it but here I got as 0 0.30, which is very high. So I can say I remove everything and I can say 0 0.0001. The step count should be very minimum or baby steps to reach the global minima, isn't it? And then do you have anything else, guys? That's okay. Booster, code, learner, strong learner is called base score, max delta. Minimum child width is one, okay? Random state zero, it's by default, it's captured it. And that, I'll go back and let's restart the kernel and exit boost. And I want this team to, do you remember on entire classifications, we build one projects. What is the name of the projects we found like whether the customer purchased the car or not, right? So they log it. Accuracy 92.50 and SVM accuracy we got 95 and KNN we got 95. And what is dash tree? I think 90, 90. How much we got? Any number, guys? Assume 90. Random forest, how much, guys? No, you don't remember 90. Okay, random for us. No, I think some 80, some 89. And all, oops, control G. And I want you to build XG boost model to it. Will you build this? And let me know what is the accuracy to the data. XG boost 
classifier. All right. So let's build this. And last time, and I'm trying to, let's do this one more time. Okay. And you build this date. And all try, try to build the model with lazy predict classifier. Lazy predict classifier. What is lazy predict? classifier guys so the lazy predict classifier will not do hyper parameter tuning are you understand it will do only parameter tuning so i mean to say 89 accuracy is increased or not in high learning rate the accuracy is increased guys 85 to 89 isn't it and let's check what is bias and excellent, fantastic model. Accuracy is bias, but I mean, bias also 89, accuracy also, I'm sorry, accuracy is 84. Okay, that's okay. And then 84.9 is 85 itself. I want you to hyperparameter tune and try to find this guys and predict fire i want you to share one document just go to google and lazy predict github okay and open link this one and open link this one and classifier okay and and this is the new packages i want you to implement while you practice then only you guys can understand, all right? So here, see, look at the code from lazy predict dot supervised import lazy classifier, isn't it? And you load the data and you split the data. There is some CLF and apply it. Your model automatically gives all the predictions, guys. Are you guys getting me or not? Will you build what is ROC, what is AUC, what is F1 score, how much time taken to build the model? This is regressions. Can you build this team online, guys? So we'll share this one to you. Lazy predict classifier and lazy predict regressor. As this is con this algorithm is not regression, so that's we built in classifier. We built in classifier guys okay this is the thing and i want you to i want you to post another link as well clear and so in this one in questions how to install this one pip install lazy predict pip install lazy predict to use lazy predict in a project's import lazy predict classifications from lazy predict supervised import the classifier my scale learn dot data set import load press cancels. I mean to say, these data you no need to assign some specific path to download. These scikit learn has by default data sets like iris, like press cancels, all those things. Are you guys getting me? So you no need to do these things. Data load instead of this one, you pass the a path. You read the data and you split the data few lines of code it will give you guys all those things what are things linear as the everything's we covered guys everything's we covered and whatever the new things classifier this is not really required in organizations so everything you i mean nearest centroid and decision tree classifier linear lda ld is also bernoulli nebis bagging classifiers add a boost do you know those things we done guys so automatic it will give you accuracies and you built in fractions of seconds you get the accuracies guys isn't it so you must need to know these packages i want you to implement in the projects which i told you and push it to the commit to the github account I think, did I share the yesterday book, get a book or not? Okay. So please, and I will share this link and I want you to work on this part, guys. So let's delay this one. Will you do team? Will you do or not? 
so i think that's it for today and i want you to work and update me by tomorrow and tomorrow i will complete cross validations model tuning after done i will give you some resume projects and then you can build your projects the build your resume update it from now onwards you can update once you update you get calls right guys i want you to you you and you stay you stay we will talk to you you and you and you okay yeah rest of them you can leave for the day are you clear guys thank you for slowness no um slowness means other model you can build you train the model using exibusser sheet but in dip don't no data scientist deploy exibusser because the train time is very fast the other part is lgbm lgbm is another package try to a little bit look look on it lgbm i guess clear or not okay thanks i know but i want you to i want you to see the recording classes and complete i think you number and tell you how to deal with it i want you to spend more time please 20 hours you try to spend when you build you automatic understand all right soro worry thank you guys and have a good day bye i will share i will share everything i will share by monday okay no need to worry good take care bye Ma we have resume sessions and project sessions as well right now you can leave